Welcome. I am Kay. I'm the host of the Bead Sisters audio podcast and I'm owner of Blueberry Chick Yarn as well as Bead Sisters Project Bags. So welcome. I have not recorded video since Christmas Eve. Let's keep our fingers crossed that this evening does not end the same way. I got deathly ill like two hours after I podcast. So if it happens again, this may be the last time I do this. I hope things are going well. Today is April something or other. Sixth, I think, and it has been a really nice day. It's it's comfortable temperature-wise. It's warm, but not too hot. It's been a little overcast, but I've had a great time today. I hope you're having a good spring or fall, if that's what's going on where you live. I wanted to record some stuff so I can sh actually hold up and show you some of the things that that I've been working on and that I've been talking about. So let's get to it. I'm a little distracted. My hummingbirds are back. I saw the first one about a week ago, and so I just saw them kind of going around the, the feeder a while ago. I don't see one right there now. I can't really turn the camera and show you because, first of all, I don't think it would be a very good picture from here, but I, I don't see them at the feeder right now, but I may be totally distracted by it. I'm going to start with something that's not knitting because I've been doing some quilting, and I am so excited about this quilt. Isn't this gorgeous? It was a layer cake set, which is pre-cut 10 inch squares from a single collection. And it's May something studios, but I, for the life of me, I can't think of what it was, but May something. And I just, I love, love, love these fabrics. And the back is one from the collection that I just think is fantastic. But I had a great time working on it, and I've just been kind of leaving it out to enjoy looking at it. I really like it. The first thing I want to show you, because I'm so excited, this just came in the mail. Look at this. This is a shop sample knit for me by Kathy Dunn. She is K Dunn, K-D-U-N-N-E. -N -N -E. I think her Ravelry pattern shop is K-W Dunn maybe, but anyway, if you look for K Dunn, you'll find her. Or if you can't, get in touch with me. She has some designs on Ravelry and she got my yellow and purple pansy gradient set and did a sample of her pattern called Holy Frip. She lives on Fripp Island. It's a barrier island off South Carolina. Look. I waited to open it up when I could show you. So this gradient set has a deep purple. Can you see the color in that? I think I was picking it up pretty well. And that goes to this kind of medium lavendery purple. There is a deep yellow a pale kind of buttery yellow and then a speckle that has a little bit of purple and a little bit of yellow. Can you see that okay? This shawl, it's an asymmetrical triangle. Let's see if I can hold it up a little bit. There you go. Look at that. Kathy, it is gorgeous. Thank you so much for doing this. Can you see this little eyelet finished off at the edge? Oh. If you are in my booth at upcoming shows, which will be, I think the next thing is actually Into the Wool in September and then SAF in Asheville in October. This will be on display, you can check it out. But in the meantime, check out this pattern, Holy Fripp, H-O-L-E-Y-F-R-I-P-P -P by Kay Dunn. It's a paid pattern on Ravelry. It's $6, so do check that out. I'm so excited. I waited to open it out for you because uh, my husband just brought it in for the mail, so I love it. I am wearing, although I may have come out of it. It's getting a little warm in here. This is Concerning Hobbits. This is my Christmas cardigan cast on. It is by Korean Walcher. It's a bulky, done in bulky yarn, kind of a heavy yarn, and you have this lace sort of, I don't know what you call it, almost like a mitered square. It's not, but it kind of gives that effect. But you have this at the bottom 
all around here, all around the neck, and at the sleeves. And I think I'm actually coming out of this one right now because it is getting quite warm in here. The other thing I want to show you, I've been talking about on the audio podcast. This is Piper's Journey. This is by Paula Emmons Feasley. She is the host of the Knitting Pipeline audio and video podcast. She does typically audio, but she puts out uh, video supplements, kind of like I'm doing today, where she can actually show you some of the things that she's been doing. Paula is currently undergoing treatment for ovarian cancer, so a lot of people have been knitting her patterns, and you'll I've seen a lot of these on, uh, on Instagram lately, so people have been working on it. The yarn is Quince & Company. I think it's Chickadee. And look at this lace border. Isn't that awesome? So what you do, you start here in the center and it like a crescent it grows quickly this way then let's see it's down here when you get it to the number of required stitches out this way you cast on extra stitches here and then you start working back and forth picking up a stitch each time you work over to this to the body of the shawl you will pull in one of those stitches. So it's almost like working um, a bind off, but it's this fabulous lace border. Anyway, Piper's Journey, it's fantastic. I really, really like it. I'm gonna check off the stuff that I've shown you so I can keep up with where I am. All right, let's go on to some of the works in progress that I've had going. This has been a year and a half because I set it aside for a while. The Doodler, Stephen West. And I talked about this on the audio podcast, which has yet to be edited. It's episode 94, but hopefully I will get that done this weekend. Keep my fingers crossed. All right, so this shawl is kind of bunched up on the needle, so it's hard to tell. But you work this section first with these wedges in here, and then you do this loopy cable-y thing on this side, you can see there's lots of ends that I need to deal with. So you got this loopy cable-y thing here. And then this very wide edge here in this dark green. Turn around. You can kind of see it a little bit better. As I said on audio, again, if you haven't seen the audio podcast, I mean, heard the audio podcast, hopefully I'll get it out before too much longer. My experience with this shawl is, it's my only Stephen West pattern so far. With this shawl, I start a section, I think, this is just so weird, this is so, I don't understand, where is this going? This is the dumbest thing ever. I am never knitting another Stephen West pattern. And then I get it going and I think, oh, this is so clever, I love this, I could do this forever. And then I get on to the next section. What is with these cables? They're so big and loopy and this is just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Why in the world am I doing? I'm never knitting another Stephen West pattern. And then I get to, kind of through and I'm going, oh, well, that's kind of nice. I really like the effect of that. It was worth the extra work. I like this. Then I get to this section. I'm picking up on this edge, on this eye cord thing, and what? And looking at videos, how to pick up right here, and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, this is the dumbest thing ever. I can't believe I'm doing this. Why am I never doing this? Get it going. It's like, oh, just I love this I want to do nothing but Stephen West patterns for the rest of my life so it's definitely been a roller coaster ride <laughs> still undecided as whether I want to do this to myself again but it is beautiful and it is clever and I understand the craze so hopefully not too much longer on that we'll see all right I'm gonna check that one off do you like my rooster pen I have some really fun pens. That's what my friends and I bring back for each other when we travel. Because it's small, it's not a very expensive thing, but it's also not a very big thing to travel, so we just find crazy, crazy pens. Anyway, rooster. What next? Oh, this is a pattern that designed by Pat. She's Looney Hiker in all of the places. Let me see if I can find that first page so I can show you. There it is. Cup heart prong socks and they have this little 
pattern detailed in it. The nice thing is because the rest of the way around is stockinette, you can use any number of stitches that you normally would use for socks. And you just plug this little pattern in here into whatever stitch count you want. Uh, it's, <clears throat> excuse me, she describes the Kephart Prong Trail. She and her husband do a lot of hiking. And it's a four mile round trip hike in the Smoky Mountains National Park. And so this is designed kind of in honor of one of their favorite trails. The yarn I am using is from Gail's Art. It's a Gail's Art sock blank. And here it is. I'm using Addy Flexi Flips. I can't decide if I love them. I'm kind of having the same reaction I am to Stephen West pattern. Sometimes I love them, sometimes I think they're crazy. But you can see a little bit of the pattern right there. I'm just getting started. It's toe up, which is not my usual. So it's taking me a little longer to, to get going because of that. But this is my sock blank from Gail's Art. It's from last year's Maryland Sheep and Wool. And I've got a little frog progress keeper right here. This marks the center of the sock blank so that I will be able to tell when I get to that point that I'm halfway or approaching halfway. You see a little crab on there? I think it's cute. And then it's Maryland Sheep and Wool again. So I'm gonna be getting uh, little pops of red and blues and this dark, the black in here, and of course, plenty of white. So I think it's gonna make a really interesting sock. So I'll hold that up again. That's how it's knitting up so far. Check out this pattern. I have met Pat and I've chatted with her a little bit uh, online. She lives in South Carolina. She's uh, up in the Greenville area. But I didn't know until recently that she actually designed. So she's got several sock patterns. I think she's got at least one free pattern. And this one was not expensive, maybe two or three dollars. So you could try out a free pattern, but this one's been great. And I think it's well worth, I'll show you the, the title again. Well worth a few dollars for this one. So good job, Pat, especially if you like toe up. She's a toe up, two at a time knitter. So this is written with some tips on knitting two at a time, which I don't do, but Pat does. So if you need some help, she's, she's your girl. Okay, the other thing I'm gonna show you, I have labeled TBF, to be frogged, because there's nothing wrong with the yarn. It has absolutely refused to be a pair of vanilla socks. I've never had this much trouble. Signatures have fallen out. I've never had that problem before. This is yarn from, it was a, a door prize at the Carolina Fiber Frolic, which I attended recently. This is the yarn, it's beautiful. Knit Global, and this is the information that I'm focusing. My eyes aren't. Anyway, it's a four ply fingering, 75-25 merino, superwash merino and nylon. The color is Rose Garden, and it's perfectly fine. This is it in the cake. I cast this on, I've had trouble with it being the right size. And as I said, I don't normally have any trouble with signatures falling out, but they sure have. So I'll have to, if I'm continuing, I have to go and pick it up. It's just been very cranky about it. So I, that one is going to be frogged and gonna make something else with that yarn. This is my bag. Is this not fantastic? I feel like one of the cool kids. It's from the Carolina Fiber Frolic, Jan Smiley, and it says 10th anniversary, spring 2019. It has a drawstring top, and there's a patch pocket inside. Can you see? I can get where you can be. Yeah, you can kind of see it there. And a little tag that tells you it is Jan B. Smiley. And I love it, it's gorgeous. I'm gonna take a break just for a second. My oven is beeping, I think my quiche is done. I am back, and indeed, my quiche is done. <laughs> gonna let it sit for a little bit to cool. Our hens are laying quite a bit, although sadly last night, or night before last, one of our hens was uh, taken by a predator. I think my husband and son have got the coop sealed off again, so hopefully they will be 
doing okay and are safe now, but we've got loads of eggs. If you're in the area and you want some eggs, let me know. Uh, but anyway, I made a quiche with cheese. It's a bacon and cheese quiche. Oh, can't wait. All right, I wanna show you some of my hand spun. Again, talked about this on the audio podcast, but now is my chance to show you. This is Targi from the Copper Corgi. Can you see that okay? Copper Corgi Targi. And there's not a colorway name on here. I don't know that it had a colorway name, but it's greens and oranges, sort of brownish blue in there in a couple of places. And I just, I love all this barber pulling. I think it's really pretty. I don't know what this is going to be yet, but probably a hat. It's fairly, fairly heavy. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty plump worsted, at least. Oh, let's see if I can twist it back up here. I spun this at the Frolic. I bought it from Sarah of the Copper Corgi and spun it up while I was sitting there at the Frolic. So, I got it completely spun and plied while I was there. And I'm excited about it, I really, really like it. I think that'll be a nice fall hat. The other spinning project that I have finished, this is fiber that I've had for ages. I got it in a D-stash two or three years ago, at least. It's from Hello Yarn. I don't have the tag with me, but it's, I think it's Shetland. It's, it was from a club colorway called Wittershins, and it's yellows and browns. There's even a little bit of a lavendery color in a couple of places, I think. Maybe not, maybe that's another one. Uh, but anyway, and I have, this one is really different. I applied all these the same way, but it's just the way they, they lined up. Loads of barber pulling in these. I have four skeins. I added up, I've got about 550 yards of this. And I'm not sure what this is gonna be yet because there's enough for a pretty substantial shawl or it could be maybe a vest. It's not enough for a full on sweater, but it might be a vest. So if you got some suggestions, I'm open. All right, before I let you go, I want to show you a few of the bags that I've been working on. The Bead Sister Shop has been closed for a while. I've just been focusing on other things, but I want to show you some bags that I've been working on. One includes some of this fantastic fabric. I say one. I actually have several. Where are they? Right here. I'm hoping to get these listed in the shop back up and running in the next few days, like within a week. And I'll probably announce on Instagram when that's done. Isn't this pretty? I just I really love this fabric. And it's just got a muslin lining. Got the label in there. I bought my labels from One IB on Etsy and customer service is excellent. This, you could easily get two skeins in here. And it's got a, a cotton webbing handle. I normally make them out of uh, matching or coordinating fabric, but this was the very last of it. I didn't have enough, so I've got a little uh, cotton webbing handle. And I have a couple of others that are some really pretty springy fabrics. This is sort of a pale yellowy green with roses that have pinks and kind of lavendery purples on them and a lining fabric that's just been in the stash for a while. Should have a label. Actually that one, oh, the label's over here. Cause I had run out of labels and had to, I'd used some older ones, but I just today got my new ones in. And this one you can see has a matching fabric handle. And this one, this has been in my stash. This fabric has been in my stash for quite a long time and I, finally said I have I bought it to make bags and I just love it it's blue pale blue little dots polka dots and then the blue and green roses and then it's gorgeous blue and white gingham inside and fabric handle now I want to show you what I'm adding bag wise 
Are you ready for this? It's huge. This is a large sweater, maybe even afghan size, and it's the same fabric, that blue flower, with the same lining fabric. And it's got a fabric handle, matching fabric handle. So if you need a really large project bag, if you're doing a, a big sweater, a bulky yarn, something like that, or even an afghan. King size is probably not gonna fit in here, but a lot of Afghan projects will fit in here. So I have one of these. And I have the same thing, but in that yellowy green and pink. And it has, I can't remember what kind of, oh, it has a polka dot lining. So I'm really excited about adding some larger bags. Every once in a while, you just need a giant bag for something, don't you? The other thing you could do is put multiple other projects in here and kind of coordinate several projects, especially if you're traveling, kind of kind of nice to corral them somewhere. The other thing I'm gonna share with you before you go is some of these spray books. Look at these little chickies. Aren't they cute? Look at these guys. This has been in my stash again for a while and I keep looking at it and plotting. So I'm gonna make some bags that will probably probably be at least two of the smaller, the two skein size, and possibly one large. I might just make small ones out of this though, we'll see. But I think these are so, so cute for spring and summer. And this is probably going to be the lining at least for some of them. I think I have enough to line all of them. So I'm excited about that. I'm gonna be working on that probably this week. Well, thanks for giving me a little bit of your time. I appreciate it. It's been fun visiting with you and fun showing you some of my projects. Again, check out Kathy Dunn. Holy frip, guys. This is it. So excited, Kathy. Thank you. It is gorgeous. I love it. Well, I hope you have a wonderful spring, an excellent week, and I'm going to try to get this out. Um, in the next day or so. Hopefully we'll chat again soon. Thanks a lot.